Hello friends, this video on metal and non-metal part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 5. As discussed, let's study the term anodizing first. What is anodizing? As I told that, it is the process of forming a thick layer of oxides for aluminium. It's not true only for aluminium, for any metal you can use this process, but generally we use for aluminium. And with this, this Al2O3 layer is created and this is resistant to corrosion, right? So, since it is resistant to corrosion, it is desired that before even uh, selling this aluminium utensils, we create this Al2O3 layer. That means, with that we are making the aluminium utensils more resistant to corrosion. So, how do we do this? How do we improve the resistance by making a thick layer of oxide so the question is how do we make a thick layer of oxide right to do this we use this uh, electrolysis process so here what we do is this is a clean aluminium that is a anode this is a positive and this guy is a uh, any uh, cathode doesn't matter and we put some acid in this and this dilute acid maybe SCL you can say dilute SCL so what happens is since it is dilute SCL, there is a lot of water in this. So what will happen is uh, this guy will give a positive, this guy will give negative, right? Mm -hmm. So this guy, electrons will come from here, right? Electrons will come from here, electrons will be somewhere here because a negative thing. So we will have a lot of electrons here, correct? That's how it is. Now this water will break into hydrogen plus, sorry, hydrogen plus one and oxygen minus 2. So there will be 2 hydrogen plus 1 for every oxygen. So it will break like this. Water will break like this, right? Ashed. Water will break into this hydrogen, hydrogen ions and oxygen ions. So now this guy, since it is positive, oxygen will flow this side and hydrogen will flow this side. Correctly? Why I am telling this is because this guy is negative, my ox hydrogen since it is a positive charge, it will flow towards my negative thing, right? That is my cathode. Oxygen will go towards this anode and hydrogen will go towards this cathode. So what happens is near the anode, we have huge concentration of oxygen. So we have more oxygen. So if you see, we have more oxygens, correct? So if you see, we have more and more oxygens here. Correct. Since we have more and more oxygens here, this guy, oxygen, will react with aluminium to give Al2O3. Correct. And since the oxygen concentration is more, it gives a thicker protective layer. Sometimes, we, what we do in this uh, uh, hydrochloric acid, we put some color. So, we put some dye. Right. So, with that, what happens is the layer that is formed, this layer, it gets the color also because the oxygen molecules which is when it, uh, the reaction happens right when it moves it moves with the color also right so that time this aluminium gets a color also thin color so it looks good so this is also used sometimes because we when you want to you know, make it look like green pink or blue we can put the color in the dye uh, in the, in the, we can put a dye in the SCL solution the dilute SCL solution and that color also becomes part of this aluminium because a layer of Al2O3 is created. So at that time when the Al2O3 is created, it is in this color, correct? Because that's part of the acid. So hope you understand this process. In this anode, you have cathode. So in this uh, is positive. So hydrogen, water breaks into hydrogen and oxygen ions. Since it's positive, the oxygen ion is attracted toward this. Hydrogen ions attracted toward this. So we are not bothered about cathode. We are bothered um, only about anode. So in the anode, if you see a lot of oxygen ions there, a lot of oxygen ions, that means oxidation can happen. And this uh, um, Al2O3 is created. So let's do a recap on what we have learned till now. We have learned that sodium is the most reactive metal. Uh, the reaction of manganese is less vigorous than sodium, right? But it is not as reactive as sodium. And but the burning of oxygen didn't help us to decide the reactivity of zinc, iron, copper or lead, right? But till now we know sodium is the most reactive. Magnesium is a little less in the middle. 
and then we have these uh, bunch of uh, elements metals actually so to put we can say that we have the sodium potassium in the first then you have manganese and all in the second and then you have zinc iron copper lead in third and then you have gold silver right so gold and silver so we have this reactivity is known but we need to further find out the reactivity between uh, these and these so the oxygen didn't help us thank you visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos try free online tests get the best quality study materials study from the best tutors and mentors and much more thanks once again